Let, let's let's get to this um, to this uh, uh, press conference. I didn't I didn't hear all of it, but I did hear uh, part of it. So Wayne Lapierre, he's the CEO of the NRA. Let's just start with this choice uh, moment. I'm sure Cliff that um, that you have many uh, favorite moments from this, but this is <laughs> this is stunning. I mean, this guy is. Everybody waited in anticipation as if, you know, the NRA said we're finally ready to become a partner in, in, in making sure that uh, tragedies like this don't happen again. My reaction at the time was, F you. We don't need you to be a partner. Who the hell, you know, who are you? But here he is. Uh, I, maybe we shouldn't be surprised by this. But here's the first thing that Wayne uh, LaPierre uh, demanded of Congress. Here it is. Departments are strained. And the resources are severely limited. But their dedication and courage is second to none. And they can be deployed right now. I call on Congress today to act immediately to appropriate whatever is necessary to put armed police officers in every single school in this nation. And to do it now to make sure that blanket safety is in place when our kids return to school in January. Before Congress reconvenes, before we engage in any lengthy debate over legislation, regulation, or anything else, as soon as our kids return to school after the holiday break, we need to have every single school in America immediately deploy a protection program (laughs) proven to work. And by that, I mean armed security. Right now, now I, I want to know. Wow. I want to know: Is this when the guys in the white coats come out and walk this dude away? Is this guy? He, I he's mean, bad shite. I guess to not use the word insane. And, and it was the best thing he could have done for us. It really was, uh, because usually the, the the only people that see these this guy's paranoid. You know, insane ramblings are people that share his level of paranoia and insanity at CPAC and places like that. And so the fact that uh, that a mainstream audience got to see this guy uh, during the day saying the things that he says all the time really was just the best gift that we could have. Now, let me start with the most ra- let me let me start with the most rational response. If I am to assume that this guy is actually serious. OK, and that is why the F. Should the taxpayer subsidize the selling of the product that you are basically pel- paid to ship? <laughs> right. right. Like, okay. like, so I'm here sure is. they won't make any money off of this either, right. no, by no, the no. way. Right, right, right. But, I mean, it, but, but the bottom line is like, wait a second. So we, I need, as a taxpayer, to pay so that your product, which kills people, uh, is in some way uh, not, not, uh, not going to allow it to happen. So, in other words, I have to subsidize your profits. The, the one of the byproducts of you selling your guns is that this happens and now I have to subsidize it. It's it's insane. But it's it's so classic them because that's that's as I've always said, this is their goal. Like when 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 people sort of say, oh, you're being cynical. and oh, you're, No, they want more shootings because if, if, if person A shoots person B, then person C buys a gun because they're scared. This is their business model. Yeah. So here it's even better because now you don't just have individuals doing it, but you're going to have the government subsidize you by doing it. And not to even mention you know, that we've already gone down what I think you and I have discussed before and others discuss often, the slippery, slippery slope towards a militarization of our society. Oh, God. So, so I mean, now we're going to do this too? Like now, I mean, is this like the movie Blade Runner or something, right? I mean, now we're literally going to go to a future where where people have have uh, you know where where just because we can't take their product off the streets, it's killing people. We're going to actually put more of their products out there, so people literally need to go through armed guards just to get into school every day. I'm not even arguing with the potential for maybe having guards check up on schools here and there and doing things like that. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm undecided on whether I think that's good or not. Um, but, but assigning specific guards to, to specific schools and turning them into essentially militarized zones constantly, 
I mean, and then, of course, you know, these guys who hate the government, the government can't do anything right. Remember, you know, they always say the jackboot thugs of the ATF, but now they want the government to subsidize. It. Well, that's the other now thing. Now we're trusting the government, I guess, right? Yeah, just, I mean, if people didn't get enough, and I want you to tell me just a little bit more about this press conference, uh, uh, just because it was just so stunning. But uh, one thing well, that... spoken spoke in tongues, I would make more sense than he did, so I'm not sure how... <laughs> I'll try my best to tell you about it, but... Uh... Uh, back in 95... Uh, former President George Bush, not the, this is a Poppy Bush, 41, not 43, uh, wrote to, I guess, the uh, National Rifle Association. I was outraged when, even in the wake of the Oklahoma City tragedy, Mr. Wayne LaPierre, executive vice president of the NRA, this is before he was the CEO of the uh, NRA, defended his attack on federal agents as jackbooted thugs. To attack Secret Service agents or ATF people or any government law enforcement people as wearing Nazi bucket helmets and black storm troopers wanting to attack law-abiding citizens is vicious, uh, vicious slander on good people. Now, of course, he wants those same jackbooted thugs, apparently, in uh, the schools. But this is a guy who alienated, uh, you know, the president of the United States uh, 15, 20 years ago now, who's now the head of this agency. And I think you're right. Uh, the, this press conference was the best thing that could happen to people who are foes of the NRA because it, it, it basically exposed the insanity of these people. I think this we is, just got 20 percent closer to getting good legislation just from him opening his mouth. And, you and know, it was kind of like during the campaign when we, we were just we kept saying, Mitt Romney, just keep talking. Right. Like I, that, that's what this reminded me of. Like when Mitt Romney came out and said the stuff about Benghazi that night and then he came out to to, to clarify it. And said even worse things right. in a press conference, and everybody was like, "Did you plan for that press conference? Did you actually? Do you have people in there that understand the media?" And that's the way I felt with this. These guys didn't even have just a night; they had a week. And I was sitting here and I was like, "Did you? Do you actually? Did people actually? I mean, advise you on this? You thought this was good? Uh, I mean, again, thank you. I'm really appreciative uh, of Wayne Lapierre for once in my life because I think that this is anybody sitting on the fence who saw this display of insanity." You know, not admitting anything. It's all Hollywood's fault. It's all a failing mental health system, which I will mind, remind you that one of the big things that the NRA decided to score their people on was opposing Obamacare, as if that had anything to do with guns. Right. But they did, because they, they, they will oppose health care, uh, but now they're complaining there's not enough health care and mental health care out there. So they hate the government, and the government's evil, and you point out the jackbooted thugs, George H.W. Bush resigned from the NRA right. over that statement and over his re referring to President Bill Clinton as a murderer because of what happened in Waco. Um, and, you know, this is the guy that's attacked our presidents in those kinds of personal terms, called them murderers, called them evil, corrupt, anything you can imagine, has talked about them wanting to come and knock your door down and take your guns, uh, has referred to them essentially in a pretty and, and the ATF for six years now, as President Obama recently pointed out, something I've been working on when, in my work with Mayors Against Illegal Guns for a while, has refused to allow someone to run the ATF. They've they've had the Senate block you know any of them from putting anybody in charge, and then wonder you know, and then they claim, well, look how incompetent the government is, government is when it comes to doing any of this stuff. Well, you it's by design. And what, what, what now, now, the other question I have for you about uh, Wayne Lapierre is, did he get to that uh, press conference in a time in a time machine? He's blaming. He's blaming natural, like 1985. natural born killers and American Psycho and <laughs> Mortal Kombat. I was expecting him to start referring to some of like those awesome Atari games I used to play. Like, no kidding, and Pitfall. Like, when like, they uh, fall in the pits with the alligators. Pong. You know, like uh, where, 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 where is this guy living? And, and where's the compassion from Mrs. Pac-Man when she's going and eating all those dots? Well, I mean, it really did have a feel like he was just uh, pro uh, trotting out the same playbook. The guy has been stuck, essentially, in some time period where uh, the Clintons are killing Vince Foster in, uh, you know, in a, in dragging his body to a park. And, that, you know, and the thing is, people have to understand that this is relevant because the NRA is sending out emails to its its uh its uh, huge email list and telling their members that all sorts of fantasy crazy conspiracy theories about Obama taking their guns and about you've got to do this right now and so this is 
This is one of those things where at least there's some sense of integrity. I think they're just as crazy at the top as they, their emails would make them sound. And uh, frankly, they're just they're living in a world net daily world of sheer insanity. One world takeover. Uh, it, it it certainly behooves other people and other interests that they're doing this. Uh, you know, so that you get things like whatever it is, cutting Social Security, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, the fact of the matter is, this is a bunch of lunatics. It's a yeah, bunch and, and, of lunatics. And that's the thing. You know, sometimes we try to figure it out with, um, with Glenn Beck. You know, is he doing it for the money or is he crazy? I think it's sort of a game we always play with some right. of these guys on the right. And sometimes, I, you know, I, we, I like to come to the conclusion, as I find myself often saying, they're not mutually exclusive. Right. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of both. That's what I think is going on here. Because I, I like to point out to people and get very specific um, that uh, one – what was it? Um, Philanthropy uh, Magazine – you know, he's the second best paid CEO of a nonprofit. Not that the, that the NRA really is a nonprofit, but they fall under that. After, like, I think it was the American Heart Association or something. He made, when they, when they calculate all of his benefits, I think this was for 2010, so I'm sure it's gone up since then, $1.281 million that year. Um, and so you just need to keep in mind, I'm sure there are all sorts of perks on, you know, that he gets on top of that, that he's, he's becoming each year an additional millionaire um, by doing this. That, that there that there is there's a, a reason to do this that he has made a decision and he's crazy and he's paranoid and he's a nut because he wouldn't be willing to because in my estimation I don't think you can be uh, as sick as, as to get up and say the things he said and not be but but also in whatever parts of his mind fevered mind actually work he realizes that stuff like Newtown is what pays his salary right. I mean, again, you know, there's just no point. I, I think we all try to use nice language and sugarcoat it. They're, they're, they're domestic terrorists. I mean, they're tied at the hip in both everything they say, in the rhetoric they use, with the people they hang out with, uh, with, with the militia movement in this country. You know, there are two board members, including Congressman Don Young, go and sign a pledge by a militia member in Alaska who then goes and, and then gets arrested because he's got a plan with his buddies to kill police officers and federal judges. I mean, this is who we're talking about here. You know what I mean? I mean, th that was that's probably the highest profile case. But Timothy McVeigh was an NRA member and somebody who sold guns at gun shows and unregulated gun shows and did stuff like that and, and, and literally used their rhetoric word for word, was reading their stuff, had it in his car. When he, you know, when he was arrested. I mean, you know, this th this is not stuff that sort of is tough to understand. They encourage this behavior. They support this behavior. They align themselves with it ideologically. You know, I mean, and, and it has results all the time. You know, a guy in, you know, who back a couple of years ago in Pittsburgh who shot three cops, and when they asked him why, he said he thought it was Obama coming to get his guns. Well, where did he hear that from? Right. Right. You know, I mean, this has real-world results. It's terrorism. It gets people killed all the time. You know, right. um, and it's it's sickening, and this guy's sickening. But again, I thank him for showing how sickening he is to a much larger audience of people. All right. Well, uh, so let's leave uh, let's leave uh, uh, Wayne Lapierre here. We got a, just uh, about another ten minutes, and uh, this is as, the last. As Bill Maher once said about Glenn Beck, we'll leave him to sit around and play in his own poo. Indeed. Uh, so let's. Um... Let's uh, let's start. Well, uh, let, uh, let, let's for a moment just like uh, uh, change uh, gears here because uh, it's the end of the year, and uh, Wayne Lapierre will go play in his own poo. Meanwhile, uh, I wanted to sort of have a chance to look back on stuff, but of course, you know, Lapierre just dropped this crazy bomb on us. 